Y'all having a good week? Amen. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Amen. I know I gained about three or four pounds. I know that. Man, I'm supposed to be on a vegetarian, fishitarian, chickenitarian something. And uh, they slid that turkey across there. I was doing good. And then they come out with that ham, and that really got me. So that uh, doctor told me that you can splurge there once in a while. He said, once a month. I said, how about every other day? We got to start somewhere. And uh, he said, well, do what you got to do. And uh, he said, uh, it's like life choices that we all face. He said, I can see you about every six months or once a year, or I may never see you again. That's up to you. Hello, somebody. Yeah, so I hope to never see him again. But uh, we have to do our part, right? <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. It's uh, totally left me last night. I told the Lord, I said, you're going to have to touch my voice because I'm going to preach your word. And uh, circumstances don't rule me. And uh, we've had a good time. And as the pastor, I do want to say thank you for all the men that come out. I know it's already been said, but I want to say it from me that uh, thank you for everyone that come out. And uh, Earl's team does a great job and they work hard. Well, my team works smart and we eat at 12 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, but we got our job finished. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand ours is not finished, but it's done correctly. And I heard that your, I heard that your leak test didn't have no pressure on it this morning. So I don't know. That's minor. That's minor. <laughs> <laughs> Earl's motto is go wide open. That'd be all right. Just get it, yo. Well, I wish. I hope and pray when I'm his age, I'm going like he's going. Yeah, man. Praise God, I, I, I want to be going like he's going because he ain't got no quit in him. You look up Bulldog in the dictionary, Earl's picture beside it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go to John chapter 10, and I know everybody knows, thinks that where we're going, John 10, 10 is a famous passage of scripture that is quoted, but I'm not going there today. We're going to stop short because everybody knows the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy and I'll be honest with you that as a pastor, I deal with this quite a bit more than y'all realize I do. And uh, I have been continually uh, the last two days uh, re resisting the enemy over me and my wife and over our family and our church family. And uh, it's the last, uh, I guess, yesterday, day before yesterday, Day before yesterday was a tough day, and uh, <laughs> my brother come in there and said, man, I had a hard night last night. He said, I had some dreams. It was crazy. He didn't even tell me what the dreams was. I said, I understand. There's some things going on in the spirit realm, man, I tell you. You know, you know, the enemy don't want us to advance. He don't want us to grow. He don't want us to expand. He wants us to just, just, just stay where you're at. Don't, don't, don't let no, don't. I don't want God to touch nobody's life. I, I just want y'all to stay. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. And I don't want to be comfortable. I want to, I want to move forward for the kingdom of God. I, I want to see people getting saved. And we had a young man get saved. Well, it wasn't a young man. He was a middle-aged man. Got saved in here last week. Amen. And uh, you, you, you having people getting saved and turn their life around, receiving Jesus Christ as personal Savior, I'm telling you, the enemy ain't happy with that. But I'm going to tell you right now, he's toothless and there ain't nothing he can do. Amen. Because we're going to move forward. We're going to see people get healed. We're going to see people get the mind of Christ. We're going to see families blessed. And you know what we're fixing to start on? We're fixing to start on seeing God bless you financially. Because God knows, and I ain't talking much about finances, but I know the Spirit of the Lord's been laying this on my heart. <clears throat> Some of us need to manage what we have, and, 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 and we need God's blessing on our finances. Hello, somebody. That's another sermon for another day. 
So let's, let's get back to this. John 10, we'll go to verse 3 if you have your Bibles. And I want you to listen to what's being said here. It's important. And if you want to know the title to this message it is, is God open my ears. Listen to it. God open my ears. The Bible says those who have hearing in the last days, their hearing would be increased. So that tells us that God can clean our ears out to hear him better. And how he cleans our ears out is by this word of God right here. Because God's not going to speak anything and don't line up with his word. And I know a lot of people that says, I can't hear from God. But before today's over, I'm going to destroy that theology, hopefully in the name of Jesus. Everybody that has been saved and received him as personal savior, you've been brought in by a spirit of adoption. And you can hear his voice. We have to train our ears to hear his voice. So before I get too deep into that, let's read the scripture. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep listen to his voice. Listen to what? We are sheep. We are sons of righteousness. And we're led. I want you to know something here. This is the main part of this scripture. Main part of what's being said today is, is I want everybody in here to be led by the spirit. That's to be led. Now, don't get freaky with that. It simply means to be led by God's voice. And it's real simple. We try to put a theology around it and we try to make it hocus pocus. And we've got to say that you got to be have a certain kind of gifting to be able to hear from God. And you have to act a certain way. Even some of the religious church will tell us you got to get all your crap together before you can hear from God. I'm going to tell you something. God was dealing and speaking to me when I was a sinner. And when I was living in sin, God was talking to me. And I know my mama was praying for me. But God, when I'd get in my pickup and I'd go down the road, God, I'd shut that radio off. And God would begin to deal with me and tell me, John Ritchie, I want you to answer the call I got on your life. And I would talk back to him. I'd say, God, I'm not ready yet. I said, I still want to be wild and free and crazy. I still want to do the things I want to do. It was all about me. It wasn't about what God wanted for me. It was about me and what I wanted. And I thought if you got saved that you had to quit being crazy. <laughs> but I learned <clears throat> Being crazy for God is a lot better than being crazy for the devil. And I learned that I didn't have to act just a certain way. I, I, oh, I want to get in my voice. Holy Spirit, touch my voice. <clears throat> I learned, once I learned about the kingdom of God, is I didn't have to be perfect. For God to speak to me and for God to use me. And then when I got into his word, I started looking at the heathen disciples that he'd chosen. People, they cut off ears. People, they killed Christians because they stood up and said, there's a Christian, this cat would kill you. And God turned around, saved him, washed him in the blood and started using him. I'm like, doggone, I ain't never killed nobody. I ain't never killed nobody. Thank God. Come close a couple times. <laughs> but they revived them. But I learned that for my life to really begin to change as I started having to listen to his voice. And it's not a religious thing. Because some religious people will tell you, if you mess up or you make a mistake, you cut his voice off. Let me tell you something. He loves you more than that. Amen. He loves you more. He, he's, God is a professional in mistake fixing. 
He will fix your mistakes. And sometimes we even get, if we go a couple of days without praying, we start condemning ourselves and saying we're not where we're supposed to be with God. Whoever, who's ever done that? Just me? But God loves us more than that. And God wants to talk to us. Is this okay with everybody today? Boy, God laid this thing on my heart. Now I'm telling you, and I'm most grateful that I can hear God's voice. And sometimes the enemy will tell you, you can't hear his voice. That's a lie from hell. If you haven't heard his voice in a while, don't mean you can't hear his voice. It means we have to tune our ears to his voice. Now, isn't it amazing the day I want to talk about God's voice, I can't hardly talk. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Amen. I'm going to talk anyway. I don't know sign languages except for one. But if it gets to that point, I'm going to try. I'm going to keep speaking for God. All right, let's go ahead and read the rest of it. I get wound up. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. Oh, that's, that's awesome right there. Do y'all realize how powerful that statement right there is? Do you realize that if you are a true born again Christian and you love God and you've given God your heart and you've allowed him to move into your heart, do you realize where you're going to go next week? God's already been there. Think about it. Think about it. It's powerful. When I was on the road preaching a lot, I was working for TextDot. We had a lot of comp time, vacation, and sick leave and all that stuff. And I would take comp time and vacation time, and I would take off on a Friday to Monday, and I'd fly out Thursday afternoon. My wife would kiss me, and I would be off. I'd go to Detroit. Me and them Detroit people, they don't, they don't understand. They don't have barbed wire fences. They got chain link. Anyway, I thought I'd throw that in there. But I would leave, and I would fly out, and I would preach and minister. Many times God would show me a church service before I got there. And I said, God, that's awesome. He spoke back to me one day. He said, I already been there. Now, if God says he's with us, whatever you face in your tomorrow, he's been there and he has the solution for you. And if times get tough, if you will ask him and then close our mouth and listen, he will give you the wisdom. He'll give you the answer to be able to go through what you're going through. I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that there's some things that happen just to see how we'll respond. He sits on his throne room and Jesus says that I'm interceding for them. And what happens is, is Jesus says, Father, they're going to call on my name in just a minute. Hold on. I see what's coming toward them. I see the tragedy coming toward them. He said, but don't worry and don't be scared. He said, because listen here, he's talking to us. Don't worry and don't be scared. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. He says, I've got the answer for you. And I'm going to walk you through this. Get a hold of it. He says, I'm going to give you the answer. And I'm going to walk you through this. Are we at the end? Oh, go ahead. He goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Oh, what? My question this morning, I want to question. Are you being led by him? Are you being led by the flesh? Are you being led by the spirit? Guys, let me tell you something. This is a very simple, easy thing to do. It's not difficult. God didn't give it to us to be difficult. All he wants us to do is call on his name and say, Lord, I need you today. 
When your feet hit the floor in the morning, say, Jesus, I need you to go before me. I need you to, 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 to bring the low places up and the high places down. That's in Psalms if you want to look it up. And, and I want you to make my path steady. I want you to re- keep me and resist all evil around me. And, you know, I, I've been praying this over me and my wife. And I'm going to tell you something. It's been a, it's a blessing to hear God's voice because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a lots of things going on in our lives and we've been through a lot this year. I know y'all been through a lot this year. And I know some of our stuff don't compare to yours, but it's the same God that gives us peace, that gives you peace. It don't matter if they tell you you got cancer, you can find your peace and your answers in God because he's the final physician. He's the, I'm not saying being crazy, don't go to the doctor. No, God uses doctors. But I'm, what I'm telling you is he has the final say. And when we hear God's voice, it brings peace to us. It brings comfort to us. It, it, I don't care what your status is or where you're at. If we just ask God and expect to hear him, he will speak to you. Now here, I'm going to give you the key to this. Being led by the spirit and hearing his voice. And let me explain something to you. God has never talked to me in a sentence. Now, he may talk to you in a sentence, but a lot of times what God does is God will say one word. And that one word. And sometimes he'll give it to me in a thought. Sometimes it'll hit me in here. Let me explain something to you. If you have a God thought, it'll line up with his word. If it don't line up with his word, it's not God's voice. So you need to resist that voice because there's more than one voice. The enemy has a voice too and he's always pulling at you, always trying to pull you back into your past, always trying to get you to lose it, always trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to repeat who you used to be. But I'm going to tell you something. If you proclaim and stay to the faith and be positive, I give you a key right there. If you're taking notes, which in this church nobody does, I seen a TV evangelist say that one time. I thought I'd try it. Stay positive. I want you to write that down if you have a piece of paper. If you don't, write it in your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, type it in your phone. I know everybody's got a phone. Stay positive. That's the first key to hearing God's voice. The second key to hearing God's voice, are y'all ready for this? It's a good one. It's the only thing Scripture says we have to do. Make a joyful noise. That's all right. (laughs) That's point number three. The second thing is that God tells us we have to do is to humble ourselves. Now, let me explain something to you. This one was really difficult for me in my life because growing up, I thought that I had to fix it if it was broke. I thought that I had to do something to cause something else to happen. And if I couldn't control it, I fought it. Hello, somebody. I'm not saying that was right. I'm saying that's how I dealt with things. And then when I got saved and God started speaking to me and told me to be loving and kind, and I, I, I didn't like being kind all the time. No, oh, you rednecks in there looking at me like you all. You, you still ain't kind sometimes. And sometimes I'm not kind. <laughs> That's my buddy, Beatty. I said something to my wife a couple of days ago that I shouldn't have said, and I apologize to her, and she apologized to me. But that means that we're human and we make mistakes. And I don't care if you don't want to humble yourself to admit your problems or your weaknesses, but I am because I want to hear his voice. And God knows that I'm real. God knows that I make mistakes and God knows that you make mistakes. And his love and his grace covers that. He said, listen, guys, just come to me. When you get upset and you feel like blowing it, it, to me, I've got one sign. If you ever see my bottom lip quiver, Kegel can tell you this. It's supposed to happen. There ain't going to be no talking. There ain't going to be no warning. If my bottom lip starts quivering, that's a trigger point for me. I'm fixing to lose my mind. And that ain't happened in a long time. Hello, somebody. 
But I've had to learn for God to mold me and shape me by hearing his voice. I had to be willing for God to change me. Now, I'm not saying that I can't ever be pushed to that place of losing it. Sure, I could be. You mess with my family, my kids, church family. I want to tell y'all something. I care a lot about y'all. I love y'all. And when I get up to pray, let me give you a key in being led by the Spirit. Is when I get up in the morning sometimes, and my wife, she's gone to work. She leaves before I get up. My brother's gone to work. He leaves before I get up. The dog gets up before I do. <laughs> I'm the last one up. But when I pray, I don't say the same prayer. Now, there is one thing I pray, God, lead, guide, and direct me and my family and keep hedge protection over us and resist all evil over us. I pray that every day, and I pray for that over all of y'all. <coughs> Excuse me. And then what I do, and here's a key that will help you, I clear my mind. Now, if you don't know how to clear your mind, because sometimes your mind runs 100 mile an hour, your mind is kind of the way your personality is. Because if you work a job and you're, you, you're a workaholic, you have a busy mind. If you've always got to be moving and doing something, you got a busy mind. But there's a way to, when it comes to the spirit realm to shut it down. And that is you got to speak peace to your mind. And when a thought of, oh, I got to do this, or I got to have that done by this time, or when all those thoughts start coming, then you got to just stop and say, no, 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 I'm not going to think about that. Mind shut up. In Jesus' name, mind shut up. I'm clearing my mind. And then what happens, usually what happens is, and it happens my near lot, my, maybe not every day, but as I'm preaching and I see all your faces, I, a lot of you, I don't know your name. And a lot of you, I know your name. I can't pronounce the dark burn thing anyway. And that's okay. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But what God does is he'll show me your face. And I know if God shows me your face, that I need to take the next few moments and I need to stop and pray for you. Because God don't show me all the time what's going on. So I got up the other morning and God showed me somebody's face that I used to work at with at TextDot. Have no connection to him. Don't even talk to him no more. He's a great hillbilly. He is a hillbilly. And if I said his name, it'd probably one or two of you in here know Monty Hilliard. But anyway, I'm not going to say much about him. But... God showed me his face, and I, and, 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 and I sensed a warmthness. You ever sense a, sense a warmthness over you? I sensed a warmthness. That was his presence. And I started praying for Monty. And I started praying, I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. For about, about 10 minutes, I prayed for Monty. And I didn't know what was going on. I said, God, you got to intervene. There's something going on. There's something happening. You've got to stop. You've got to get involved in this. It was two days later. I don't forgot about it. Two days later, and Monty calls me on the phone. And he said, Brother Rich. I said, yeah. He said, two days ago, they tried to take my daughter away from me. I said, I know. I didn't know what it was, but I know you was going through something because God had me praying for you. He said, that's the reason I called. He said, because I realized somebody was praying for me and it had, the only one I know in my life that prays is you. Hello, somebody. What a way to be known. Amen. Amen. Does your friends call and say, hey, pray for me? Oh, come on now, guys, come on. God intervened on Monty's behalf and it was awesome. There comes my voice back. Praise the Lord. And he intervened, not just because I prayed, but because somebody was sensitive to what God was saying. Because when we pray and we intercede for people, God moves on our behalf. And when we learn to mix faith with our prayers, it makes a difference. 
It makes a difference. Because I want to see every one of you blessed. And I can promise you, you want to be blessed or you wouldn't be coming to church. Hello, somebody. The old days of preaching people into hell and where it's hot and all that stuff, is hell real? Yes, it's real. But you're smart enough, stay out of there. You're, you got enough intelligence that you should not go to hell. Had a person the other day telling me, said, I thought about committing suicide, Pastor. I said, what stopped you? Said, he said, well, he says, I believe if you commit suicide, you're going to rush yourself right into hell. I said, well, that's to be determined. The Bible says that no man has the authority to take his own life, that Jesus has the keys of life and death. I said, I'm not going to judge suicidal people. I'm not going to judge that. I'm going to give them to the grace of God. Amen. I said, but here's the deal. I said, God don't want you to die. If he wanted you to die, he'd take you out. You idiot. He said, do what? I said, you dead, burn idiot. He said, why am I an idiot? I said, you're putting up with the devil's thoughts. I said, God's not going to speak something like that to you. God speaks life. Amen. Come on. And life more abundantly. I said, when's the last time you prayed and talked to God? He said, oh, it's been a couple years. I said, a couple years? I said, that don't make no difference. Can you give him just three minutes? He said, yeah, I think I can do that. So we prayed together. He said, man, I feel better already. I said, do what? He said, I feel better already. I said, well, I'm glad you do. Waking me up two o'clock in the dead burn morning. And I don't mind it at all. I really don't. And I thank you for all of you who've been sending me text messages since I said that the other day. I've been, I've been stopping and praying over every text message. It's easy for me because I no matter where I go, I get the text message. The prayer request goes to my computer. It might be a day or two before I get to the prayer request on the computer. But if you text me, I bam, I got it right there. And no matter where I'm at, I stop and pray. Now, let me tell you something about listening to God's voice. You have to learn to humble yourself, and that means you got to kick out the pride. That means you got to quit saying, I can fix this on my own. Don't wave at me. Yeah, it's okay. I know it's getting hot up here. I know it's hot. <laughs> mm, hot up here. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Us men have a problem with that, and I know you ladies do too, because you ladies are dead burn hard headed. Some women are doing this to me. Some women are like, well, I'm not, I'm not hard-headed. And some of us men are hard-headed too. Hello? <laughs> We're all in this together. But we have to come to a point in our life that we surrender our will to God and we have to say, Lord, I need you to help me every day. I don't need you to help me just every once in a while. I need you to help me every moment of the day, no matter where I go, I need you. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're here to be baptized, y'all come on, get ready. I'm going to tell you something. It's a phenomenal thing when God speaks to you. And I've learned one thing else in humbling myself is, is if God don't speak to me many times, I already know the answer. Listen, I got to give you a secret about God. He don't speak to waste his breath. Because any time God opens his mouth, whatever he says has to come to pass. So God, to be honest with you, don't talk as much as some people says he does. Had one young man that I was mentoring years ago. He told me, God speaks to me every morning. I said, you a lying cur dog. I said, what's he say every morning? Does he say good morning to you? He's like, yeah. I'm like, no, he don't. When God speaks, it has to come to pass. That's the reason he's the molder and the potter and the clay. We're the clay in his hands. So what's the most important thing? Humble ourselves. 
where, let me tell you some of my notes. We must be led by the voice of God. In Matthew chapter 11, 15, whoever has an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. Listen to this. It's powerful. John 8, 47. Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. That's a power. If you belong to God, you can hear his voice. I don't care what any other church has ever told you growing up in. You don't have to jump through hoops and, and run backwards. And uh, Let me tell you, you see this word right here? This word right here is your Q-tip. Hello, somebody. This right here, you get in the word, it's going to clean your ears up. It's going to take all that religion and that stupid thinking out of you and what other people's told you. You start finding yourself into the word, you'll be amazed how well and clear you can hear God. You say, well, I ain't heard God in a while, brother. It's okay. He's still waiting on you. He's still speaking. And a lot of times what God speaks, I can hear and you can hear the same thing. That's the reason I have young people tell me all the time, man, I was just reading in the scripture the night before last, and then you get up and you preach it on Sunday. Isn't that awesome? I said, no, it's just hearing. You're hearing the same thing I'm hearing. Hello, somebody. That's the reason when I was being mentored, we was in West, West Texas one night, and the old man walked off the platform, handed me the microphone. I said, I hadn't prepared. He said, you've heard the same thing I've heard. Get up there and preach. What did that do? Did it embarrass me? No, it prepared me. So you young men, better be ready. So one Sunday morning, I might just hand you the microphone. Oh, you're going to freak me out. I, and the first thing I'm going to do is get up here and say, well, I hadn't really prepared for it. You know, I'm going, no, -uh, you better stand up here and bow up like a rat on a raptor. You better get on it. It's his word. It's his word. And some of you say, well, you don't mentor me. I'll hand you the microphone too. If God tells me to. Hello, somebody. I ain't giving the microphone just to anybody. Why? You got to hear God's voice. You got to be led by the Holy Spirit. And you got to learn to hear his voice. It's not difficult. It's real simple. And if you don't get nothing out of this morning but this, is I want you to know before you leave this building, you can hear God's voice. Some of you don't think you can. You can hear God's voice. Sit down, humble yourself, clear your mind. When you're driving to work, clear your mind. You'll be amazed at what God can say. Because there are certain denominations that says that all kinds of weird things, I'm not going to get into them. If you don't do this and you can't hear the voice of God, <coughs> that's a bunch of crock. You can hear God's voice. Listen to it. Be obedient to it. He's not going to ask you to do something you can't do because he's going to give you the strength to do whatever you need to do. And the first thing he's going to tell you is, is what he told me is, he said, you need to work on getting your life in order. Wave at me. I need to know somebody. Yeah. Wave at me if you still love me. Yeah, yeah some of you don't love me. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. I'll grow on you. I promise you. You keep hanging around. Okay, we're ready to baptize, young man. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew? You little dumpling, you. <laughs> couple weeks ago, you, uh, couple weeks ago, you said yes to Jesus. So today, what this water represents is to, Jesus said, to fulfill all righteousness. So when you go down, it's a representation of your old life going down. And when you submerge under that water, it's a sign of washing of his blood. And when you come out of that water, it's a sign of a new life and a new beginning. I pray that God gives you leadership skills and developing leadership skills. And I pray that you're a leader and a witness for him everywhere you go. 
I pray that you sense God when you pray. I pray that you sense his presence. I pray, God, that he would lead you and guide you and direct you. And may that those that are surrounding you, your friends and stuff like that, may they see the change and may they want to change too. We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you, Donnie. Hey, any granddaughter that's born in back of a minivan, that water ain't going to hurt you. Uh, <laughs> sweetie, I love you more than you even know. I've watched God do great things in your life. But I feel like and sense that now it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about what he does through you to other people. You've lived through it. You've got a testimony. So always stand and share that testimony. Because as you come up out of the water, everything of your past is washed away. And you walk in a new presence and a new anointing from God in Jesus' name. We baptize you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I got a real ring, go. That's not the cold water taking your breath, that's Jesus. He'll take it. This is Heather. Heather? <laughs> it's good to get baptized in November. We're waiting on a towel, baby. I pray that God returns everything the devil stole from you. From what other people's taken from you. Now, I'm not talking about physical things. I'm talking about self-motivating things, images and other things that people have told you. It's not true and it's a lie. And I pray that as we baptize you, that all the hurt and the pain that has been brought your way would be left in that water. And when you rise up out of that water, you'd be righteous and clean. And God would order your steps from this day forward in Jesus' name. We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Denise, good to see you, Denise. I pray God's blessing over you and the things that even in your early youth that you experienced, I pray God just healed every part of your heart and soul. And I pray that you walk in God's presence I pray that you're an encourager and a leader and that you would begin to intercede and pray for those people that God's put in your life to see a difference in their life. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Just know prayer makes a difference. And I pray that God opens your ears to hear him clearer than you've ever heard him before in your life. We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anybody else? We'll baptize you. We got to keep your clothes on. All right, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father, I speak a blessing over all of us that are listening. I pray that you'd open our spiritual ears to be tuned to your voice. 
Father, that when you do speak, that we hear it and we obey it. For we know you love us. We know that you intercede for us. So, Father, clean our ears out and tune them to your voice. Let us be sensitive to your voice. And for those that have thought they can't hear you, I pray that tonight or tomorrow that they, you would speak to them and let them know they do hear your voice because of your love and your grace toward us. We give you the praise for this, and I pray health over everyone here. I pray prosperity over everyone here. I pray a hedge of protection that the enemy cannot come against us. I proclaim the scripture that says that we have been delivered from all evil, and I thank you for that. Bless our homes, bless our spouses, bless our children, our grandchildren. Bless Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.